With over 200 flights under my belt, I've learned exactly what to do and what not to do while traveling. And we have over a thousand Packhacker Pro members who have traveled just as much or more. So today, me along with Packhacker Pro members are sharing some of our best travel tips with you. Let's start with packing light. You probably already know this if you're a Packhacker fan, but we stand by minimalist travel, whether you choose a backpack or a suitcase. Pro member Jeff says they avoid packing large luggage whenever they can. They found it to be a real pain to lug a huge suitcase up and down stairs and through narrow hallways, and Lauren, our managing editor, agrees. She had to go up what felt like a thousand steps after taking a ferry from Naples to Sorrento. Her travel backpack made her back a little sweaty in the heat, but she had a much easier time on the stairs than those carrying their luggage by the handle. And that can be fixed by choosing a bag with good ventilation. So enter our alpaca giveaway for the chance to win this pack and more. It helps if you don't overstuff your bag before leaving home. Lance tries to underpack on the way out. Along with being more comfortable to carry, they think it's easier to fit all the random stuff they buy on their vacation if there's extra room in the bag. It's much easier to make space when you have a capsule wardrobe too. And you won't stick out like a tourist if you bring basics that you can mix and match together. Plus, Gord points out that thinking about what to wear and how you'll fit in will just stress you out. They notice you aren't really fooling anyone when you try to dress like a local, so dress comfortably instead. Just make sure you have clothing that works for different occasions, such as stricter religious sites that require you to cover your shoulders and knees. And that's easy enough to do with pants and a long sleeve shirt. Meanwhile, pro member Ed found out after 300 flights through Asia that you don't really need to bring anything special there. Just the same clothing you wear in similar weather back at home. However, we would recommend leaving behind expensive watches and jewelry. Lauren says it's easier to find cheap dupes of engagement rings online to wear on your trip so your finger won't feel naked or you can snag some of those rubber or silicone rings instead. If something valuable slips off while you're water skiing, it's gonna feel a lot better if that thing is a dupe and not the item that is really important to you. One thing you should bring along is extra medication. If you end up checking a bag, make sure you pack it into a bag you'll keep with you on the plane so you're not stuck without it if your luggage gets lost. Bringing extra also means you'll be okay if you run into delays on the way home or drop a pill down the drain. Matthias makes sure to bring up 50% more than what they'll need on their trip, and just in case, looks around their location to see where they can refill if needed. Lauren does that with her contacts too. Since she wears one a days, she brings at least five more than she needs in case one rips or falls out. You'll also wanna pack these same shoes you usually wear all day. Thomas's biggest tip is to pack comfortable footwear, especially if you'll be on your feet for hours at a time. Make sure you break them in before your trip too. Lauren once had to buy a new pair of shoes in Miami on the first day of her trip. This has happened to me too. I have wider feet, so typically I pick shoes that are a bit wider, but on a recent trip, I had really narrow new shoes that weren't broken in yet, and man, I just had blisters all over my feet. Never a good sign. Make sure to test and break in your shoes before you leave. It's also good to prepare before you go. You can research most locations online, so note some spots that you don't want to miss, whether it's a restaurant your college roommate recommends or the best-rated coffee shop on Yelp. Of course, Lance says that it is possible to over-prepare because you miss out on some of the fun and spontaneity, and I totally agree on that. You gotta keep some things a little bit loose. I found my favorite restaurants by just aimlessly wandering around a city and just taking a chance on a spot. That's why travelers like Jonathan like to roll with the punches. They said they have the best time when they're not focused on what could go wrong. One time, Jonathan accidentally became a delivery man in Vietnam for more than an hour. It's turned into their go-to travel story, and that just wouldn't have happened had they been more cautious. And as Matthias says, chances are that something will go wrong, so relax and just don't stress out about it. After all, when you're on vacation, it is best to go with the flow and learn for next time. Some things are easy to prepare for, though, like the climate. While you may think that countries near the equator will always be warm, some have vastly different temperatures depending on where you are. Just like you can ski and swim in the same day near LA, Daniel says that they spent one morning melting in oppressive heat in the Amazon on a trip to Peru and were shivering by the evening in another area of the country. You can prepare based on current events as well. The Smart Traveler Enrollment Program is a great resource, Daniel says, because they'll give you updates about political upheaval, protests, and natural disasters at your destination. Researching local customs can also help save you from awkward situations. One of our favorite places to find travel gear is Huckberry, this video's sponsor. They know that the right equipment can make your trip so much better and have options to suit any style. 
like this Flint and Tinder wax trucker jacket that I'm wearing right now. It goes great with the Flint and Tinder 365 pant, which is comfortable for long days of exploring a new city. There's a wide selection of gear to choose from and Huckberry makes it easy to find what you're looking for. New items drop daily and they collaborate with the best brands to create gear that you can't get anywhere else. This colorway of the top rated air travel kit is a Huckberry exclusive and they teamed up with GORUCK to create a slick version of the GR1 without the PALS webbing on the outside. That's great if you love the design but want something less tactical. If you need some inspiration, check out their online journal. It's got articles and suggestions for what to eat, do, and pack for adventures in the city or the great outdoors. And be sure to check out our gift guide for some of our favorite products over at Huckberry for the gift giving season. Link down below. Pro Anna has a lot of good tips for taking care of money on your next trip. They say carrying some local cash can keep you from getting stranded. While taxi drivers nearly always take cards, sometimes they don't. And you can avoid getting stuck on the side of the road with the right currency. And ask for a metered rate so you'll know what you'll be getting charged before you get to your destination. If you're able to use a credit card, look at one that gives you travel perks without foreign transaction fees so you can rack up those airline miles and travel more. Just keep in mind that some travel cards may require you to get prior approval before your trip where you just have to notify them that you're going to a country or you might even get a temporary pin that you need to use before you withdraw money at an ATM. Matthias also recommends having two or more ways to pay, including two credit cards. Then you're set if one gets rejected. Credit card companies may block your card if you use it without alerting them to your travel plans, so be sure to make that call before you leave, or you may be scrambling to pay for a ferry. If you need more cash, you can usually withdraw it from any bank at your destination. However, we recommend looking at your local bank's international partners because sometimes they offer free withdrawals. And other times those cards just don't work in certain ATMs, especially in Japan. You can also save cash by seeing the right attractions. Most of our pros recommend asking locals where to go instead of just relaying on the internet since they probably know where to get the best bang for your buck. As Anna says, they know more than Rick Steves, but I'm still a really big Rick Steves fan. If you love airports and wanna see more of the world, look for connecting flights instead of non-stops. You'll get to check out new places and you may even save some money too. Some offer the taste of local history and neat features like the Rainbow Tunnel here in Detroit. The Detroit airport also has an awesome water fountain, probably one of my favorite fountains anywhere, but it is usually down for maintenance. Sergey recommends researching the connecting airport before you land there so you can make the most of your time. Like the time they were able to freshen up by using the showers in the Doha airport. And if you know you can leave the airport and make it in time for your next flight, it's a great chance to get a few hours of sightseeing in. Just leave enough time to get back through security. You can also book connections separately to save some cash by booking two individual flights, creating your own layover. However, Sergey says that it's best to go with one airline or at least airlines that have an alliance. He's found that it's easier to get on a new flight if you miss your connection with the same company than if a competitor caused the delay. Also plan for at least a three hour layover in case of delays or if you need to go through customs when you land. You'll likely be able to cut the line if you ask nicely, but no one wants to be that person. Make sure to pack a survival kit. It may sound a bit dramatic, but it will help with issues like a runny nose, motion sickness, or a small paper cut. A pre-made first aid kit usually has individual travel size packages of the essentials, so I like to pick one up and only bring a few of what I need and save the rest for my next trip. This next idea from Matthias may not be for everyone, but we think it's great for frequent business travelers. He brings a second cheap smartphone preloaded with the essential apps for a backup in case something happens to his primary device. So many things require two-factor authentication these days that you can really be lost if you're left without a backup. Plus, having a properly configured secondary phone can save time and stress. You'll also want a copy of all your important documents and travel plans separate from your phone. Matthias keeps an encrypted copy of his reservations on a USB thumb drive, including travel documents, confirmations, and things of that nature, so they don't have to take up too much room in his slinger bag. Losing, misplacing, or damaging important stuff is one of the most annoying issues to arise on a trip, so they like to be prepared. Kindness and courtesy will help you a lot along the way too. Ed likes to pick up chocolate at the duty-free shops for the attendants on his flights and say they've gotten better seats and service on a flight just by being nice. They also keep a list of private drivers in places where they often travel. That lets them skip the line for a line of people waiting for a taxi or ride share, and they get right to the fun. Finally, be open to new adventures. We've met some of the kindest and funniest people while traveling, so be open. If you're bar hopping, hostel hopping, you're in a tour group together, make sure to talk to those people because chances are they're awesome. That's it for this one. We'll see you in the next video.